My name is Mo Manclang. Um, I am the communications director of the US Federation of Worker Cooperatives. I'm super happy to be here, um, all the way from Philadelphia. We're going to see an, a few excerpts from Black Conference, uh, which is a 360 degree theater experience. It's set in 1939. So just close your eyes for a minute and, and get yourself in that, in that headspace. Um, and it's going to be during the opening ceremonies of a civil rights conference. Um, packed with drama and political intrigue, Black Conference is going to bring all y'all face to face with civil rights greats as they risk everything to build power and secure a place for Negroes in America. Um, so we have the deep, deep honor of having Reg Flowers, who conceived of this play, um, which was inspired by Jessica Gordon Nemhard's book, Collective Courage. If it's not on your reading list, it should be. <clears throat> and uh, so he will, be, will come on stage and perform a few excerpts from the work. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, they live in Detroit. Um, a theater, uh, he's a, a, they're a theater of the oppressed practitioner um, and founder of Falcon Works Theater Company. Um, Reg has officially been a theater practitioner since, um, since the age of six. Can you imagine? The age of six. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so everyone give it up for Reg. I held a meeting at the Elks Lodge in Harlem, 90 degrees in the room, windows shut, curtains pulled, paranoid stool pigeons would carry word back to the bosses about who was there and the bosses would fire anybody they even thought supported the unions. They knew. We couldn't win anything without power. And we couldn't get power unless we organized. Been called the most dangerous Negro in America organizing labor. This plenary presents work over the past several years by everyday individuals organizing neighbors, churches, co-workers to build power and secure some place for the Negro. Helena Wilson is a lioness of the labor movement, organizing club women, Pullman maids, wives of Pullman porters, president of the colored women's, oh pardon, Mrs. Wilson, president of the International Ladies Auxiliary to the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, Helena Wilson. Ella Josephine Baker agitated classmates at Shaw University, led mass protests to free the Scottsboro Nine, co-founder, eight years, director of the Young Negroes Cooperative League, and now directs education for Harlem's own cooperative, Ella Jo Baker. Our next panelists came to our Friends of Negro Freedom almost 20 years ago claiming socialist, the only group welcome a working class Negro wanted some intellectual stimulation, most uncomfortable man in the room. George came to write for us at The Messenger, fancy, started a column for the Pittsburgh Courier, then now is written for the Mercury, the Crisis, the Nation, and the Globe, co-founder of the Young Negroes Cooperative League, George Schuyler, ladies and gentlemen. And now, our keynote speaker. I can't list his accomplishments within the time allotted. Co-founder of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Organizer of countless conferences and gatherings on the state of the Negro race, the Atlanta conferences, the Pan-African conferences, and so many other convenings over 30 years, indubitably author of the seminal Souls of Black Folks, countless books, articles, papers, and plays, chair of sociology, Atlanta University, comrades, Dr. William Edward Du Bois. Ooh. 
So Black Conference is presented as a conference. The audience enters to find volunteers in registration and concessions and rehearsing their speeches. A frantic Bayard Rustin runs through the halls in search of a box of missing programs. It's the first sign of trouble because these programs contain the names of the presenters and in the wrong hands this could be dangerous. A box of missing programs. A shortage of volunteers. A venue owner who gets cold feet and so now the characters have to impro improvise to keep things going and the actors have to improvise with the audience asking questions, gossiping, filling them in on who's there and their significance and their existing conflicts, the trials that inspired them to become these agents of change. Characters, along with the ones previously listed, an openly gay Bayard Rustin in 1939, a virtually unheard of Gwendolyn Brooks, Richard Wright, Zora Neale Hurston, a 10-year-old Martin Luther King Jr. attending with his father, MLK Sr. The audience is engaged throughout. There's a plenary, there's a plenary that frames the event and fills us in, gives us some collective, uh, vo collective vocabulary and also some biographical Im information like the monologue I just did. The play invites existing cooperatives to give testimony during the performance, during a question and answer section. The play has its share of drama. Things heat up between the characters and oppressive forces reveal themselves in a final moment of the play that will be memorable, to say the least. The audience is drawn into this historic struggle and their urge to take up the reins and take collective action. Excuse me. I've just been informed this venue is no longer at our disposal. And the remaining training sessions will unfortunately have to be canceled. This should come as no surprise in the continued opposition from those in power antithetical to our aims. The truncation of schedule need and truncate ambition. We came here daring to dream a future. Well, I say it's time to stop dreaming. I insist we must wake up and recognize that future can only be ours by taking it and holding it. Stop telling ourselves someone else will do it and pawning it off on our children for heaven's sake. Talk is not enough. Hearing is not enough. There can be no satisfaction awakening to the truth while we witness and fall prey to dehumanization, exploitation, and violence. We can't be satisfied with citizens stranded in poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. We can never be satisfied with children deprived the fundamentals to become productive social contributors. And we cannot be satisfied when the choice must always be the lesser of evils. Every thinking, breathing human being has not a right, a responsibility to achieve and to evolve. You take what you've learned, you learn all you can and use it to arouse whom you might to act 
and organize and pledge our hearts, our minds, our bodies with no thought of reward. Our reward is in achieving a society of conviviality and cooperation. No force under the sun can block and stop a revolution of a people united. We have the tools, the know-how, and reason, our communities, our lovers, our children, our very lives. What we may lack is the will. We may lack the courage. We may lack the belief in ourselves being labeled for so long as unable, unintelligent, undesirable. But if these are the phantoms that defeat us, then we ourselves are the monsters. That, comrades, is the worst of nightmares. Finding content in hell and fear in heaven. Will you act? So the company of Black Conference. <laughs> yeah. The company of Black Conference has formed a touring cooperative of, yeah, of performing artists, engaging audiences through interactive performances that empower communities to take collective action. Yeah. The, group is, uh, the group is planning to tour several cities over the next 12 months, including the Worker Cooperative National Conference in Los Angeles. <laughs> Thank you. Dates in uh, Detroit, Michigan, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the Pedagogy and Theater of the Oppressed Conference, the 2019 Pedagogy and Theater of the Oppressed Conference in Colorado, in Pueblo, Colorado. Um, we are constantly, we're uh, currently raising funds to subsidize travel to those places that might uh, best, m most benefit from the message of cooperative action to lift people out of poverty and to transform society. You can find us. Uh, oh, there's Jessica Gordon Emhart. <laughs> I just had to put that in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can find us at, uh, on Facebook at Black Conference Touring Company. Thank you.